our next guest. We're going to bring out uh, an Olympian. We all know Kyle Schufeld. He won gold in 2004. A lot of us know him from that one in gymnastics. Also, some of us know him as the guy who broke both kneecaps and competed in the Olympics a year later, which most of us haven't done. Um, <laughs> Also, just two weeks ago, he was inducted into the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame that is just going to be moved uh, recently from uh, Toronto, where it shouldn't be, to Calgary, where it should be. And thank you. And he is going to come out and talk to us a little bit about that experience. Would you please welcome Olympian Kyle Schufeld, everybody. Thank you, my friend. Have a chair. Kyle is now going to beatbox a little bit for us. <laughs> Wasn't that crazy? He was so good. I was backstage with him. Like, <laughs> that's intense. Like, that, that's tough. That is a guy who knows what he's doing. All right. Uh, a couple of questions for you. First of all, the Sports Hall of Fame. And uh, Kyle and I were arguing about this backstage. I said, you're the first gymnast to be in the Sports Hall of Fame. True, false. And you said, kind of true, kind of not. Kind of true, kind of not. I'm, I'm the first artistic gymnast to be inducted. And uh, back two years ago, there was a rhythmic gymnast. So then I said, are we going to fix his mic? Yeah, we got to fix it. This, this is as close. <laughs> <laughs> this is as close They're as. They're doing this on purpose, eh? <laughs> <okay? laughs> it's funny. Uh, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne came to me earlier and said, is there any way you can get me close to Kyle's ass? Yeah. <laughs> said, You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, that's, fine. that's what I do, Wayne. Let's, now, can we hear him OK? Am yeah, I on? Is Testing hard. one, two, three, four, five. No? Wayne, you get another chance. Okay. <laughs> Wayne! Oh, there we go. Okay. It'll come. Okay. There we go. All right, perfect. We're there good. you go. Because otherwise... If, good if, thing I wasn't beatboxing. I would have worn all your ears out. <laughs> okay, now, then, so he said, all right, I'm the first artistic, artistic gymnast, but not the first uh, because there was a rhythmic gymnast, to which I said, they just fling ribbons around. How hard is that? To which you said. To which I said, they're actually kind of the, one of the most intense athletes I've ever seen. They put their leg up on like a chair higher than this, and then their coach is like pushing down on them. And those girls train for seven, eight hours a day. So is that right? Yeah, they're pretty hardcore. So whether they, they, and tell us a bit about the Sports Hall of Fame, what it was like, how that all was. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was two weeks ago, and um, I went to the event, and I'm sitting there waiting to be inducted, and I'm looking on the stage at all the people that are in. There was about 50 people that, that were there. There's 500 in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. and man, the group is absolutely incredible. Like you're there with some serious athletes. Not that you don't deserve it, but that must be kind of exciting. Well, part, half the time I'm like, I, at the press conference, I'm sitting there, and right beside me is Patrick Waugh, and then on this side is Jacques Villeneuve. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm like, I, I just did flips. Like. <laughs> a tight little uniform, that's all I did. <laughs> Maybe you should have said that. Villeneuve, I've never seen you in tights. Yeah. You know that. Uh, now, a lot of people know you, like we were saying earlier, about the 2004 win, but talk a little bit about breaking your knees and saying, I'm still going to go for that, because that's an incredible story. Yeah, it, it was really, in my career, it was a, a, a huge blessing for me, because sometimes you can get r wrapped up in, in um, outcomes and in obligations. And after I won the 2004 games, I was really, I started to do gymnastics for a different reason than for that love and that passion that I had. And breaking my legs was like a wake up call. I landed with two straight legs. My legs bent back the wrong way. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did the same thing. My eyes rolled in my head. I was like, holy. <laughs> you know it's not good when everyone around you goes, <laughs> Like, yeah, that's, that's not a good sign. So, but for me, it was, it was really um, not a rebirth, but it was an awakening. And I, I, I realized that being an athlete and being able to represent your country is a huge honor and a privilege. And I really learned to appreciate every single day the small victories. Well, and, and talk a bit about that. Because, and those of you that know uh, how much of a fan I am of Kyle's, one of the big reasons is not his athletic ability, but his spirit. That's... But is that something you've sort of always said, I'm going to be positive since you were a kid? Or is that something you had to work at? Well, I mean, my girlfriend Kristen's here tonight. She'll be the first to tell you I am not positive all the time. <laughs> but who is? It's, it's, I'm human. This is life. And you can't always be up. But I always 
do seem to find the positive perspective, and that's something that's really brought me to mm. the point that I'm at in my life. And if people now want to know what's up with Kyle Schufelt now, what can they look forward to? Yeah, so I retired um, a year and a half ago, and it's been a, a pretty crazy transition. Let me tell you, when you do something that you love and you feel so much passion for for 20 years, you feel a little lost. But finally, I feel settled. I'm, I'm establishing a career in broadcasting and doing a lot of public speaking, and that's starting to move forward. I'm taking it to the next level. So. And I know in March, you have a festival coming up. You're calling it a gymnastics festival. What's that about? Yeah, so um, at the end of March at the University of Calgary, we're going to have the first annual Kyle Schufeld Gymnastics Festival. And it's just my opportunity to give back. And uh, we're going to have hundreds of little gymnasts running around and doing their thing. And we're going to raise money for one of my favorite charities, The Right to Play. So it's, it's awesome to be able to lend your name to something, something that's giving back to the community and making a difference. Uh, one time I remember, I, isn't that great? One of the, uh, once you and I were chatting, uh, Kyle, and you talked about how even though you were in that intense program, you were in the, this kid's good and we're going to push him like crazy, that, that you're also a fan of making sure people know it's for fun. It is for fun. If, if I didn't do it for fun, I wouldn't have stayed doing it for 21 years. Um, I'm, I'm an intense person. I'm a control freak. I want to be great. I don't want to do anything half-assed. Mm -hmm. It's got to be awesome. And sometimes that drives me nuts. That drives me crazy. But that's who I am. That's my personality. And that's the thing that really drove me. I was able to find the thing that I was great at, the thing that I was passionate about. And we all have it. Not everybody's destined to be an Olympic gold medal gymnast. I'll tell you that right <laughs> away. But we all have something that we can be great at. And for me, excellence was a gold medal at the Olympics. And I pursued that. And I pushed for that. And I wanted it. Yeah, and nobody wanted it as bad as you did and you got there. Just because all of us at some point in our life, before we bring out our next guest, and you're going to hang with us for a while here, but all of us have points in our life where the stakes are high. Whether it's a, a, a discussion with a partner about an intense relationship thing, a business meeting, a, an, and some sort of event where the stakes are high. You were at an event where you were there and you're saying the next, how long is that, was that final thing you had to do? My routine was 60 seconds. So you had, this is where you knew make or break in the next 60 seconds. If we're gonna steal from Kyle Schufeld, what do we have to remember before a big, intense event to do it as best as we can? First and foremost, do not think that it is a 60 second opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> or you are so screwed. <laughs> for me in that moment, I was so prepared. I had prepared for 16 years for that moment. I knew the time, I knew the place that I was gonna be at my absolute best. And we all do reach moments in our lives. Lives are like this, right? We have peaks and we have, we have highs and we have lows and we all have these amazing moments. And when you're prepared for them and you, you put the work in, mm -hmm. there's just something that overcomes you and, and you just trust. Sometimes you just have to trust the fact that you're ready. And those feelings of, oh, I'm gonna puke all over the floor, that's good. That's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. You gotta trust that and you gotta go with it. It's gonna push you to the next level.